So I'm looking for a speaker in proposition of the motion. You, sir, name and college and keep your speech to two minutes. Laurie Marks, speaker. The Zeitman is right. We need a Labour government, but we haven't got one. He said, in the first 18 years of conservative rule, it's not 18 years, it's 28 years and counting. <laughs> I will do as he invited a judge of government on its record. A record of a more regressive tax system. The gap between rich and poor widening. Billions of pounds of public sector money, particularly in health and education, urinated away on the private finance initiative, which serves to do nothing but damage public services, line the pockets of the rich business owners <laughs> whose government loves even more than the Tories did, and make Gordon Brown's debt figures look better than under the arbitrary treasury rules, PFI debts off balance sheet. The continuation of privatised hospital cleaning, which is the main cause of soaring hospital infection rate. The continuation of <coughs> subsidising privatised railways to achieve far more than it would cost to renationalise them. So, so that, that while services and fares remain falling, the fat cat bonuses can continue to rise, <coughs> then everything the noble law said about civil liberties and more, bans on protests around Parliament and number 10, and the return of the debt penalty in an extrajudicial, extrajudicial summary form, as we saw with the murder of John Charles de Menezes at Stockwell Tube Station. And, what, why is this <laughs> and worse than any of that, not well, far worse even than a mere one death at Stockwell, the death of thousands upon thousands in Afghanistan and well over a million by now in Iraq through first the sanctions which they continued, which America and Britain remain supporters, and then <coughs> the Iraq war, the great, unquestionably Britain's greatest foreign policy catastrophe since the appeasement of Hitler in the, night, in the late 1930s. If... Could you... I could, yes, I, I, I am. <laughs> <laughs> if you actually believe in all the wonderful values which Mr. Zeichner claims to talk about, then you should oppose, you should support the motion and oppose the government. The motion is not this House endorses the Conservative Party. Yeah. <laughs> Any speakers in opposition of the motion? <coughs> Sir, name and college. Hi, I'm Gavin Bailey, from Darwin. Um, I was thinking about the objections that the Tories have come up with against the government. Um, there aren't enough prison places, there's too much spin, there was a raid on pensions, and they all disagreed with a number of the policies on the Constitution and the liberal, uh, liberal, illiberal policies in the Home Office area. If we compare that for a moment to what the Tories did when they were the government, there were two recessions. Unemployment reached 3 million, interest rates reached 15% that people had to pay on their mortgages. In contrast, we've had the longest period of growth, unbroken growth, for 200 years since records began. When the Tories were in power, we had queues, people queuing for 18 months. We had hundreds of thousands of people waiting on the queues, in the queues. We had violent crime rose every single year of the 18 years that the Tories were in government. Every single year, two Tory MPs were actually linked to jail for the things that they did while they were in power. Uh, Jonathan Aitken, with his trusty sword of truth and his shield of honest play, or whatever it was, and um, Jeffrey Archer. And we also had the, the um, poorest 10% actually got absolutely poorer under the Tories as well. Not just relatively poorer, absolutely poorer. And then there was the poll tax. Now, I know a lot of you won't remember this, but people actually had to riot to get rid of this. People were so upset with it. They, they were, if, you, if you were on the minimum wage, you had to pay exactly the same amount as if you were Richard Branson. It was absolutely outrageously unfair. Yes, there have been some failings for this government, but it's absolutely nothing compared to what the Tories did to us. something to debate. Be thrilled that there is actually something contentious here. Um, 
In many countries around the world, uh, lack of confidence in the government is a foregone conclusion and indeed a universally held view. Be glad that your politicians can do such extraordinary things like, you know, speak in complete sentences. <laughs> <laughs> agree with the point that Nick Herbert made earlier that this debate is mainly around the trust that the government show in the people. Um, I've just started on the graduate course in medicine here in Cambridge and for the last three years I've been working in the NHS, first of all on the front line as a support worker and then for the last two years in various middle management jobs. And even over those three years what I've seen is a complete and utter destruction of the morale within the NHS. Yes money has been thrown into it, yes waiting lists have come down but the quality of the service that people are receiving, we've got nurses being forced to do so much admin that there's no longer any time for nursing. Mm -hmm. We have nursing assistants being forced to do the nursing. We have hospitals that are, have <coughs> occupancy rates of 98 odd percent and that's why we're getting ridiculously high MRSA rates. And over the last <coughs> six months or so, I'm sure you've all seen the, the crisis in the medical profession. The government failed completely to listen to doctors about where the medical profession should go. They chose to dictate their vision of what the profession should be. And they did this solely to gain control. They felt that the medical profession had too much power, had too much influence. The people in this country trust their doctors. They don't trust their politicians. The government are now very clearly attacking the medical profession in every way that they can to break that trust that the people of this country have in their doctors. Um, and uh, we have to have trust in our public services, we have to have trust in our in, in order, us as individuals. I believe, I believe <coughs> four speeches are meant to be limited to two minutes, and we all try and keep to that. And the points of order, the people not make points of order about speeches being too long before they're not too long. Thank you. <laughs> The government recently did the no their own survey. They spent eight million pounds on finding out what people wanted from the NHS and what people thought of their GPs. 85% of them said they were entirely happy with access to their GPs. The government's new policy following their own survey is that they have to focus on improving access to their GPs. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they twist, they spin, they lie consistently and they're attacking the professionals <coughs> and we have to stop this. Thank you. gentlemen, um, I would say, as you said, my lords, ladies and gentlemen, uh, and you may think that's a mistake, but I've been